France's government is filing charges against a former student expelled after an altercation with her school principal. It resulted in online death threats. The principal at a high school in the east of Paris opting for early retirement. Kathy Kadir Clifford has more. The French government takes a stand for teachers after a Paris school principal resigned in the face of online death threats. On national TV Wednesday, the prime minister said France will sue a teenage student who accused the principal of hitting her after she refused to remove her headscarf. I've decided the state will file a complaint against this young woman for slanderous accusations. The state will always stand with these officials, those who are on the front line facing these attacks on secularism, these attempts at Islamist entry into our educational establishments. On February 28th, the principal told three female students they should obey the law and remove their head coverings. Two complied, but a third, an adult in a vocational training class, did not. There are contradicting versions of what happened next. The headmaster caught her like this. He shouted once, twice. She didn't take it off. Did you see it? No, but my friends told me in detail. He caught hold of her and the girl didn't like it. The headmaster didn't hit a pupil. He simply asked a student who was crossing the room to take off a headscarf. France's education minister visited Lycée Ravel in early March to show her support for the headmaster. He was provided personal security. Still, students were told Tuesday he chose to take early retirement. For head teachers' unions, it's a worrying incident. C'est une situation qui peut it's a situation that could happen to any of us because we make sure that the law and secularism is respected. And we can end up faced with those who want to break this rule. The student filed a legal complaint against the principal, which was later dismissed. Now she is the one facing legal action. And for more, we're joined by a former high school teacher himself, uh, Gabriel Latanzio Dorovsky, Associate Professor of English at uh, Paris. Par Paris, Paris, Paris 1, Paris 1, yep. uh, Panthéon uh, Sorbonne uh, University. Thanks for being with us. Anytime. Uh, j just to understand the context here, mm -hmm. there was uh, the gruesome beheading of a, uh, a high school social studies teacher uh, a couple of years back, uh, Samuel Paty. That shocked the nation uh, after he'd showed cartoons of the prophet. And then last year, there was uh, the, the deadly stabbing in a schoolyard in uh, the northern city of uh, Arras. Uh, mm -hmm. How do teachers feel these days? Very worried. Th this uh, conversation we should have is uh, right at the crossroads of many different topics. Secularism, the authority of teachers, uh, religion in society today. There's a lot going on, of course. Uh, if there's anything I can say to everyone here is how worried French teachers are that they're, uh, they're you know, they, they, they might face dying at school. Um, I'm, 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 here's what I was hoping we could stress today. You, we could say the conversation is about the right of students who would want to wear the veil, and we could argue that in a secular society, someone who is using a public service has the right to his own beliefs. That's a fine angle to take. This is a conversation we can have. But I do think that today's news really is the threat that teachers face and that, you know, uh, principals face yeah, as well. Let's, let's unpack that for a second. Mm. Um, you saw in that report the mm. education minister uh, had gone a few weeks back to show right. support because this happened in February, the incident. Right. Uh, had gone uh, got to, to show support for uh, the school principal and the staff right. at this high school in the east of Paris. It wasn't enough. He opted for early retirement instead. Right. And, 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 and really because those death threats took are, a toll on him and they were online, those death threats. And they're very real. When someone writes a death threat, it's not just insults online. It's in the context where killings have happened less than a year ago, less than three years ago, and they might happen again and again. So uh, I, I, I understand that we might want to have a discussion about secularism, say, can students express their religious beliefs. But here's the French situation. I think historically can help to understand what's happening. It's not just about, you know, the separation of church and state. I think there a bit more is at stake here. In the 1930s in France, there were attempts by the French far right to politicize the youth. Back then, there was a minister of education called Jean Zé, 
And Jean Zay made the decision that the quarreling of adults should be kept outside of schools. And that decision, I think, is really what we're talking about here. The decision we made is that teachers have the responsibility to help kids grow up. And to do that effectively, we needed to keep political propaganda outside the school. Now, this is religion. Fair enough. As a teacher in a high school, I have had my share of moments where I had students tell me whenever we mentioned, say, homosexuality. Oh, this is not the way God intended things to be. And then my job is to address it. So the user of the public service can be free to voice that idea. But at the very end, I'm the teacher and I'm saying, in France, homophobia is not okay. The values of the Republic that we defend is uh, are of inclusivity. You know, we, we, we try to make a collective out of the respect of all minorities, no matter what they are. And so that's what we do. My belief is that there is still a strong majority in France in favor of keeping politics and religion outside of the classroom. You can express your ideas in the context of a discussion with the teacher, but you don't share a political leaflet. A strong majority in France, but how about a strong majority among young people? Because oh, there have been yeah. a couple of surveys that have come out recently uh, where it appears to be not the case. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I, I do think something's happening. Uh, again, um, there's a historian in I really- In particular, what those surveys show is that young people feel yeah. that uh, the secularism laws, the way they're uh, presented, are a way of stigmatizing Muslims. Which is a fair point to make. And it is a conversation we should have. Again, I, I, as I grow older, I realize the virtues of French universalism. This idea that the, lay, the, the law, the state, should not make distinctions between people. There's French citizens, and we have the same rights, and we don't want to know more about it. You know, I do think something's happening with the youth. The youth thinks of their freedom in terms of self-expression. Culturally, something has happened. A number of historians have talked about it, Eric Foner, others. Before, when we thought of our freedom, we thought of public participation in politics. We thought about uh, rights that you could have, et cetera, and so on. And what some historians have shown is that freedom has been privatized over the past 15, 20 years. And I privatized. think- Privatized? Privatized. How so? Well, when you think about what makes you free, people will think about their personal experience, not so much in the way that they will, uh, for instance, express a vote or in the way that they can join a group. They will think about their freedom in terms of how they can manifest themselves. And so think about online. It's the way you present yourself online. It's, it's the likes you get from showing yourself a so certain way. So the primacy way. of the individual the I think so. over uh, the collective body. And I think so. a classroom is a collective body. It's their way of doing politics. They vote less than before, but they will want to self-express all the more. And I believe that religion takes a special place, especially in some parts of France, because it's, it's just a, uh, it's giving them a sense of meaning that, that, that Society today is failing to give them as well. Uh, so we could talk also about the place of religion, of course, but yeah. Private Are you issues. disheartened because a teacher has opted for early retirement in the face of threats? Or right. are you heartened by the reaction, which, by, by the way, includes charges brought against this uh, former pupil? T to be honest, we, we've... Uh, We've been lucky enough here with you, Francois, to discuss this issue of secularism over the past few years. France 24 has covered uh, the death of Samuel Paty and, and Dominique Bernard, and, and I do think it's good that we have that conversation. Uh, and we've discussed that, and I've come in with a little bit of uh, sadness, and today a bit more than usual, because I do think that we're not finding the way out of that situation. I wonder if talking about it more will lead to even more and more tension. My belief is that what we need to do as a nation is provide an alternative to these youth so that they find hope in being part of the French Republic and not so much being part of a subcategory of the French Republic. You talked about the youth just before. My impression is that they will express themselves through categories and not so much through causes. And that's, that's a big issue to me. I wish we would have more youth mobilization around issues not so much about self-affirmation, but more so how do we tackle climate change, et cetera, and so on. That's, that's a concern I have that is very valid. And I, and I do worry that there's going to be more and more violence. What do teachers do? What do you do if you're a high school teacher today? Regarding that story? Yeah, and regarding the next time you have to tell a, a pupil uh, to take off their headscarf, because so, that is the law. Right. So first, sometimes you hear people in France say, oh, teachers self-censor. They don't dare talk about religion or secularism with students, etc." That's not true at all. We talk about it. We, the job is done. The job is done. As far as uh, the expression of, of religious and sometimes religious fundamentalism, this is a complicated discussion to have, but I've had it myself. I had a student wear a nabaya, so a very long dress that was the, the way for that student to express her 
her, her, yeah, by her religion. Yeah, but banned at the start of this school year by the government. Right. So, in truth, it already was. Because the law of 2004 said that you could not express your religion ostentatiously. So, but there was a decision, as, you, as you're explaining, in, in September 2023 to reinforce that idea. So to make the discussion very, to, to make the topic very clear. This apparently uh, impacted less than 200 kids out of 12 million. So it's, it's not that uh, intense. But, but, but I do think that there will be attempts to destabilize the French school system and, and for it to be a place where we don't talk about education anymore, but about other questions. And that's, that's very worrisome. We are, we're not trying to, to, to fix the French school system, which should be ameliorated, should be made better. And, and, and now it's going to be, you know... Uh, One quick for final question for you, Gabriel mm -hmm. Atanzio-Darovsky. The Prime Minister of France, he's mm -hmm. a former education minister. Right. Where does he put the accent in all of this? Where should he be... Where should his focus be? Look, uh, uh, I, I've been critical uh, uh, of the current government because uh, my belief is that education matters and, and the, out of the total wealth of France, the, the share that we dedicate to teaching the youth has gone down for the past 25 years. So in that respect, he's not, you know, changing the trend and that's a problem. To be fair now, I think on a number of issues, he's understood that there were problems. He understands that uh, we should be more demanding when it comes to how uh, much work students put in. He's willing to address that. When it comes to that question, which is how teachers are threatened sometimes by a very small minority of our public, he, they understand it as well. You know, this happens five years ago. I doubt we even talk about it. And I'll tell you, there are dozens and dozens of French teachers right now who are waiting for more support. So this made the news. This principle made the news. But beyond him, there's quite a few, myself included. In 2021, I was threatened and I was protected. The decision was taken by the executive, actually, to, you know, take me out. And for a year, I waited. I was paid, but I didn't work. And that was one way they protected me. But that was two years ago, after Samuel Paty. Now, they would do that. They would protect students mm. and, and they would protect teachers. That's good. But, but, I'm, but there's still so much more we should do. For so sure. much more, indeed. Uh, Gabriel mm -hmm. Atanzio-Darovsky, many thanks for being with us. Oh, anytime. Thank you. Stay with us. There's much more to come here on France 24.